September 17th and I'm gonna show you my garden. Um, I've taken out the tomatoes that were here and I've put in more basil. These are kohlrabi. It's in the brassica family. They are cold weather crops. The carmen pepper didn't do very well this year. I had some like aphid problems that were stunting the growth. And that's actually the only pepper that it has set this year. This is nasturtium. And it's edible. Super spicy. It kind of tastes like cucumber. Um, and then horseradish at the end. Sort of interesting. That is a sweet potato vine. This is what's left of the um, tomato itself to rip out. These are rattlesnake and purple pole beans. Um, I grew up with this whole trellis and I'm hoping that they will reach the top. And then on this side, there's gonna be peas. I've already planted peas. Um, snap peas. These are yard long beans. They're producing nicely. I'm leaving this on to dry. So I have seeds for next year. You just leave them on the plant to dry until they turn like a papery white color. There's one here. And then you open it up and there'll be seeds inside. Let's look at this one. So there is that seed or bean, whatever. And you can actually plant that year and they will grow next year that's how you save those seeds there's quite a bit on here I didn't really care for the taste that much of these because they get big really fast and then they get like chewy this size is nice these are the three strawberry plants that you saw in the first video I Pick the runners off because I read somewhere that you want to pick off the runners until they have a nice root system established. So um, that's what I did. This is another pepper that wasn't doing so well until I got rid of the aphids, and now it has a tiny little pepper and some flowers. That's an okra plant that I think is dying because it's got a little cold the last couple of nights but okra is supposed to be really good for your digestive system so I have three plants. This is a tomato and another tomato. I would know the varieties of this if I had plant tags but I just planted them. For fun this year is sort of like a guessing game. Who knows if we'll even get any fruit off these before the frost kills them. Um, but I just like to see them grow anyways. It's interesting. These guys are called suckers. With these you want to pluck them off. So pinch them off right here. You could wait until they get a little bit bigger. Um, let's see, what's a good example? I don't have any. Um, this will get bigger and then grow an, actually an arm. So if this were to be like this size, you could pluck it off and put it in water. It will root and then you could plant it. So all these little hairs along the stem of the tomato plant, if you put them into soil or into water, they will grow roots. So if this were to fall over uh, tomorrow or in a couple of days, there will be roots all along this side of the stem. So with these, I want to pluck them off. Um, I didn't do this with my first three tomato plants and they literally grew humongous into bushes and I couldn't get any of the fruit. It was hard to harvest. They died off really fast because of disease. So I just pluck all of the armpits that I see now. That's what we call them, armpits. Suckers. Um, this is kale. This is called Ragged Jack Kale. It's um, from Baker Creek. It's really delicious, and it's supposed to get better as the frost comes. 
super mild tasting right now. There's no like bitterness or anything to it. Um, I planted a lot of it, so I'm really excited to have a lot of this during the fall. This is another kohlrabi. I got these from the Santa Rosa Heirloom Expo or the Baker Creek Heirloom Expo in Santa Rosa from a guy that was selling them. Um, and he had told me that they were from this spring because you can plant cold weather crops such as like cabbages and broccoli in spring. Um, and so I'm not really sure if they're gonna do much more than this because I'm not sure if they were root bound or anything like that. So that's just an experiment. These are carrots. Um, I don't plant in rows or anything. This is my first time growing carrots, so we will see what happens. Here's some radishes. This is from a mix called Garden Party Radish Mix. Um, usually I like to buy individual seeds in packets, but um, that's what I had. So look at that guy. Um, they don't get much bigger than that. I mean, I'm gonna wait a little longer, but in my experience, mine don't get much bigger than that this year. Oh, there's another one. It's so funny because with root plants, I just want to pull it up and see like <laughs> how far it's grown, but in doing that, you'll kill it. This is another pepper, another pepper. This is a pea plant. That will only get 28 inches, so it won't need a trellis or anything like that. It'll stand up on its own. These, however, will need a trellis. These are peas as well. This will climb this trellis. Um, I might have to thin these out, which sucks. Thinning means just like pinching off at the base the plants that are too close together so they have a better chance of survival. Um, so there's some more sprouts coming up. Honestly, not 100% sure what these are either. I know this is carrot, carrot, but I just kind of sowed seeds kind of crazily. In the summer, I have more of a plan, but in the fall, I just stick in seeds where there's room. This is edamame. This is the soya or soybean plant. These are delicious. Um, they're raw, obviously. Usually when you buy them at the store, they've been prepared, so cooked. Um, so when I harvest these, which there will be like nothing, just like a snack for one person, um, I will have to cook them. This is a tomato plant. This is a clone of the chocolate sprinkle um, that I had in my garden earlier. Like I was talking about with these suckers, if you allow them to grow, you can root them and plant them. That's what this is. These two are chocolate sprinkle clones. This is um, a zucchini, um, a black beauty zucchini. It didn't do that well. Once again, I had lots of aphids, um, which stunted the growth. Those are dead aphids because I sprayed them with soapy water um, and aphids will suck sap from your plants and stunt the growth. Hey look! It's my sleepy babe. What I was saying was the aphids will suck sap from your plant and stunt the growth and the sap that they um, suck from the plant leaves like a sticky sweet residue which attracts ants and the ants will actually protect the aphids because that's like their food source. So it became a huge problem. <laughs> um, this is a sunflower. I believe this is a teddy bear sunflower, but I could be wrong, so don't quote me on that. It's not opened up yet. There's a couple little heads forming. I would love to see these guys before the frost comes. I'm in California, so I think it's zone 9A, I'm not sure. So we don't get much of snow, but we do get a killing frost and that's a 
expected to be in October, October 31st actually, so we'll see what happens. This is a ground cherry. It's in the tomatillo tomato family. Once again, I don't know what that is. I usually just pinch it off when I see it, but this plant is so small. There we go. This plant is so small that I'm not sure if I'm gonna get anything before the frost comes, probably not, but I got to see it grow nonetheless. This is a pea plant, a pea plant, a pea plant. I planted more pea plants along here so they grow up the trellis. These bags are left over from when I had melons hanging here. I'll show you that over there. That is my purple basil. I love it. I've cut it down about three times now and it's grown back that big each time. This is my crooked neck squash. Um, we had a gopher and it ate half of the plant but half survived. Since then I've gotten these that send out like noises, electro something waves and deters things like that. Another tomato plant that I don't know if is going to be able to produce anything before the frost comes. Another tomato plant. These are rattlesnake pole beans and purple pole beans. And these climb up this trellis here. These are the purple ones. These are the rattlesnake ones. They have beautiful coloring. Ooh, that one's got a hole in it. My garden is all organic. I don't spray anything, but the occasional soapy water when I have like an aphid problem, so. Oh, look at that bug. Like I said, there will be lots of life in my garden because I like the bees, but I don't like when things get eaten before I have a chance to taste them. Hopefully those climb up and fill up that whole trellis. Right now it's looking kind of bare, but the side is doing pretty well. This is an eggplant. I thought it was the Black Beauty eggplant, but they don't get any bigger than this, and when they do, they turn hard and, like, this is ready. I'm guessing that this was mislabeled. That one's so cute, it's adorable. This is my favorite spot in the garden. This year. These are emerald gem melons, and that's about the size they get. They'll fall off the vine when they're ready. I have them in produce bags, so when they fall off the vine, they don't hit the ground and split open. They'll get ants in them, and I won't get to eat it. So, this is my favorite thing. This is a cattle panel trellis. It just looks lovely. On the other side of the trellis, I have the moon and stars melon. Next year, I'll do it in the ground. It's so cool. All these spots are there, like, genetically. I think it's just amazing. These two were actually growing into cattle panel, and I had to pop them out because I just hadn't noticed, and they'd set fruit and gotten quite large without me knowing. These are Boston Pickling Cucumbers. They were attacked by aphids as well, so there is one there, but they were doing much better before the aphid attack. Look at all those guys. This is my baby pool filled with strawberries and chives. This was a good solution because I have zero space here. Um, I live in town and this was an ideal space saver. If you've never grown chives, I highly recommend. They are amazing. They taste just like green onions, but not as spicy, just more flavorful. I love it. So these are what are called runners. The plant wants to spread as fast as it possibly can. So it'll set out these little runners and this, once it connects with soil, will grow roots. So I cut this one off. Um, let's see, this one is 
um, quite long as you can see and this will form a root and it will form leaves. This is actually a runner that I pulled off of the plant and planted. And oh, here's an example. So this is a runner from this mama plant and that will form roots right here. This is my little tiny, teeny tiny in-ground garden. This is a ground cherry. Um, no fruit yet, I'm really excited. Hopefully I get to try one before the frost comes. This is flashy trout back lettuce. Delicious, more radishes. Radishes, more kale, ridiculous amount of kale. These are beets. This is calendula or calendula. And if you see, this is dying back. They do that. Um, this is a seed. So if I pull all of these flower heads off and bring them inside and take off all the dead petals, you will be left with seeds, which you can then plant next year or pop them in the ground in the spring. Those are all seeds. Um, and they're really easy to save. You just lay them on a paper towel to make sure that they're completely dry before you put them in a paper bag or a plastic bag. I do plastic and label them. This is new growth, so that'll make a flower, but everything else, if I harvested them right now, I could get a bunch of seeds for next year. This is the pomelo plant that if you've watched my first video, you've seen before. This is the tiny fruit that was set that I self-pollinated. There's one, two, three, four, a couple good sized ones on there. The first year that I had this, this spring, I only had one and it fell off prematurely so it wasn't ready, but it was delicious. So I'm excited. This is my goji berry plant. Um, these taste horrible if they're not dried or mixed into a smoothie. smoothie. They taste like a poisonous pepper. Um, they're just not to my taste. I'm sure there's people out there that like them. That's the climbing aloe from the first video. This did flower. It had a beautiful orange flower. You can try to put a picture in right there. On this side of the garden bed, this is another okra plant. I believe this is Clemson spineless. I get a lot of my plants from transplant, so the downside of that is not knowing exactly what variety. So I love okra. I think it's my favorite vegetable. And they have the most beautiful flowers before they turn into okra. This plant is an eggplant. And this is the fruit that it sets. Absolutely gorgeous. This is ready as well. I left a fruit on here a bit too long and it turned yellow, which is another sign of being too ripe. This is what they look like. Aren't they adorable? So beautiful. So they start as a flower. And then they get pollinated. Look about that size. And they get about that size start filling out, getting some color. That's about done. That's when you want to pick it, I've noticed. Any bigger than this, they start turning yellow and getting tough. I think I'm gonna do more garden tours next year. As, as this is beautiful, you can imagine what it looks like when this is full and that side is full and I love it. Oh.